What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be continuing our team preview and prediction videos. Today, we're going to be talking about our first group of five team in the Cincinnati Bearcats. Before we get into this video, if you guys enjoy, please leave a like. You can also consider subscribing. You don't have to, but it would mean a lot to me. Um, and also ring the bell, uh, please, because I'm pumping out a lot of videos this summer. Um, and it would just notify you of when a new video does come out. So make sure that you ring the bell. Join Tailgate Nation. That way, also leave a comment down below. Tell me some teams that you would like to see me look at or some other video ideas. And hey, even tell me what you think Cincinnati is going to be doing this year. Also share the video. I know I haven't said that in a little bit. But please do share the video. Uh, helps get it out to more people as well as liking the video does. So, again, talking about Cincinnati. Uh, this was a good team last year, and this has been a good team for a couple years. Um, and I think this team is out to prove something. This is the best shot that a group of five team is going to have since Houston had in 2016. Um, the best shot a group of five team is going to have to get into the playoffs. Cincinnati's got a lot of games on the schedule to where they can really prove themselves. And the American Athletic Conference is the best group of five conference, in my opinion. Uh, so Cincinnati's going to have a lot of chance. A lot of chances in the schedule to really go out and make a name uh, for themselves. This team is going to be great offensively and defensively, but before we know what they have coming back, we have to know what they lost. And it's quite a bit more talent than I or, uh, originally thought. Jared Dokes is gone. Um, that's a big loss for Cincinnati. I'll show you why it might not be a huge loss uh, in a little bit, uh, but Jared Dokes is gone. Um, I believe went to uh, the NFL. And top wide receiver from last year, not top receiver, that was a tight end, uh, but top uh, wide receiver in terms of receiving yards last year was Jason, Jason Jackson, uh, and he is actually going to be transferring out. Um, the player I did not originally have on this list, I just added as of recently um, because I didn't know he was in the transfer portal, but is in uh, the transfer portal. Uh, don't know where he's going to go yet, but is in there. Bruno LaBelle went to the NFL uh, as well as, did James Hudson and Darius Harper. A couple guys there on the offensive line. No, Bruno LaBelle's a tight end. Um, had some good catches last year uh, for the Bearcats. And guys on the defense, Elijah Ponder, Ethan Tucky, some key losses there on the defensive line. Um, although both of those guys kind of played substitute. Uh, Jarrell White is the leading tackler, or I should say was the leading tackler for the Cincinnati team. He is gone. As is James Wiggins and Derek Forrest out of uh, the defensive backing group, and those are huge losses. I mean, those guys were leaders back there in the defensive back, especially James Wiggins. Last year, coming off an injury, uh, that was huge. Uh, and he played great last year, um, and I believe went to the NFL. Uh, but as the saying goes, it's not about what you lost. It is about what you have, and they still have a lot of great talent on this team. Desmond Ritter is that quarterback coming back, and Desmond Ritter – could be one of the best quarterbacks in the nation this year. Uh, to a lot of people, a projected first-round pick. I know there are a lot of people that don't really like Desmond Ritter, don't think he's that good of a quarterback. I personally, I think Desmond Ritter is a pretty good quarterback. He does have a lot of nice pieces around him, and he is such a leader. Um, this is the biggest win for Cincinnati, uh, hearing his name, saying that he is coming back. That is a huge win. Uh, Jerome Ford, the former transfer from Alabama, is going to be that number one running back with Jared Dokes gone. Um, he should be uh, prolific in the backfield this year, saying that they can get the holes on the offensive line field, which I definitely think Cincinnati can. A couple wide receivers that you need to watch out. Alec Pierce, Michael Young. Um, you could throw a couple other guys in the mix. Also tight end Josh Wiley, who was that leading receiver from last year. Uh, but Alec Pierce and Michael Young are absolutely fantastic out there, the wide receiving group. And I expect the wide receivers to get more involved this year than they did last. Uh, no receiver had over 400 yards last year. Um, so I expect that to increase this season uh, just because of the number of games. And, uh, of course, with Desmond Ritter coming back. Uh, big key wins for Cincinnati coming back on the defense, though. Uh, Majai Sanders, believe is how you say that name, the leading, uh, the sack leader on this team last year. He is coming back. Uh, Darian Beavers, Joel uh, Dublanco, there at the linebacking group. Kobe Bryant and Ahmad Gardner are going to be back there in the defensive backs. Ahmad Gardner is a future NFL draft pick to many people. Cincinnati's got a lot of great talent, and we're going to take a first look 
at their schedule. They were 9-1 in 2020, 7-0 in the American Athletic with an American Athletic Conference championship. Uh, they ended up losing the Peach Bowl to the Georgia Bulldogs. They were maybe a missed field goal away. If Georgia would have missed that field goal, who knows what would have happened uh, in that game. Hey, here's the schedule. I'm going to talk about some games more than others as they're more interesting to me. Possibly closer matchups. If the date gets highlighted in green, it's a win. If it gets highlighted in red, it's a loss. Without further ado, let's go ahead and predict Cincinnati's schedule. And they opened the season with the Miami, Ohio Red Hawks. And this is a quality team. Um, you shouldn't overlook uh, Miami of Ohio. This is a quality team. They've been competitive in the MAC for years. I even think won the MAC uh, in 2019. Of course, Ball State won the MAC last year. Uh, but Miami, Ohio has competed in the MAC. Can they compete with Cincinnati? Uh, it is an in-state rivalry game, but I don't see this one being particularly close. I think Cincinnati is going to easily be able to handle Miami of Ohio, and I also think they're easily going to be able to handle Murray State, uh, them being an FCS program and Cincinnati being um, one of the better um, FBS teams out there right now, at least in my opinion. Um, I know a lot of people don't like their group of five, but Cincinnati – <laughs> going to be a really good team next year. They should be able to easily win both of their first two games. And then the hard games come. First game on the road against Indiana. Now, I think Indiana is going to be a lot better than they were last year. Maybe not a lot better, um, but they're definitely going to be better than they were last year. And I think this is going to be a fantastic matchup. I think it was my number four matchup to watch in my non-conference. Go back and watch that video. There are a lot of great games on there. Not my top 10 games of the season, but my top 10 non-conference games of the season, at least in my opinion. This is just going to be a fantastic game, period. Cincinnati, Indiana, both these programs to me are on the rise. Cincinnati has been on the rise for a little bit. Indiana has been on the rise as of last year, growing into this year. Hey, both teams are returning a quarterback. Um, both teams are returning some great offensive weapons, and both teams are returning quite a bit of talent on defense. This is going to be a very intriguing matchup. Um, and to me, I, I think a game that is going to come down to the wire. Um, and what really sold this game for me and why I leaned the way that I did uh, was defensively. We know both of these teams can score points. Indiana was able to score points last year. Cincinnati was able to score points last year. Both of these teams are going to be able to sc score points. It's who do I trust more on defense? That to me is going to be the key to win this game. And I got to give the defensive credit to Cincinnati. I mean, just seeing the way that their defense has have played uh, over the last couple of years and knowing what they have coming back and coming in as well. I think Cincinnati's defense is going to be more talented. I think they're going to be able to make some better stops, uh, some more crucial stops. And I think is what ultimately is going to let Cincinnati be able to pull off a slight upset, what I'm calling here, against Indiana. Yes, Cincinnati might be ranked higher, but group of five versus power five, I'll consider it a slight upset. I think Cincinnati is going to beat Indiana in Bloomington on heels of that defense. I think it'll be a high-scoring game, but defense will be relied upon heavily. And then they get their bye week. Perfect time for a bye week because you got possibly your hardest game of the season next. Uh, November 2nd, Cincinnati has to go on the road in South Bend to play Notre Dame. So in Bloomington one week, then they go back to Cincinnati, practice, figure some things out. They're going to be tired after that Indiana game. I can already feel it. But they get a week of rest going into that Notre Dame game. So they should be full, healthy, and ready to go, providing that no serious injuries happen. This is also going to be another fantastic game. Uh, Notre Dame is bringing in a transfer quarterback in Jack Cohn uh, over from Wisconsin. How healthy is he going to be? That is to be seen. Uh, Notre Dame's got a lot of holes to fill, but it, it, it is Notre Dame. They should be able to fill those talent gaps just fine. This, to me, is going to be another incredible matchup. I can't wait to watch both of, the, both of these games that I'm going to talk uh, quite a bit about. And again, to me, it comes down to the defensive side of the ball. Although in this game, I feel like it's going to be a little bit more of an offensive battle. Uh, South Bend, to me, is a tougher place to play than Bloomington, uh, just because, again, seat capacity and Notre Dame being the historic program that they are. While Indiana is not a historic football program, Notre Dame is. I think this is going to be a hard place to play. I think Cincinnati is going to be tired after the Indiana game. Yes, even coming off of the bye week, I could see this one being very close, and I absolutely think it's going to be close, and I could see Cincinnati winning, but I just think Cincinnati is going to drop one of these two games, and I have them beating Indiana. I got to have them losing to Notre Dame. I just can't see them. 
I'm going to rephrase that. I can absolutely see them winning both of these games. Yes, absolutely. But as of right now, I just think that they're going to end up dropping one of the two games. It's just a really hard back-to-back um, kind of uh, unique as well as both of the games are on the road. Now, they do get their bye week, which I could change my opinion about this game come time for the season. But I do have them losing to the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in what I think is going to be yet another hard-fought game. Um, and that game just might keep Cincinnati out of the playoff. But I do have them losing. Uh, to Notre Dame. And then Cincinnati is going to kick off American athletic play in which they should be able to take care of business. But is that what I have? We'll see. Uh, Friday game against Tulsa. Now, usually on the road, we see a lot of highly ranked teams lose um, during the weekday because it's a short week of practice. But this one is at home. And I don't think Temple is going to be anything super special next year. I do have Cincinnati being able to win that game pretty easily. Then they get a little bit of a longer week of practice to prepare for the UCF Knights. UCF, of course, hiring a new head coach in Gus Malzahn, um, and Dylan Gabriel is going to be that full-time starting quarterback. Jalen Robinson is a name to watch in this game, the wide receiver from UCF. He is absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Is he a top 10 wide receiver in the nation? Wait and find out later in the summer to watch my video on that. Um, but 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 for UCF, this is this is this is a huge game in my opinion for both of these teams. Uh, it is a home game for Cincinnati, so I'm leaning more towards Cincinnati. Um, but there is upset potential here. Um, now it's not necessarily a trap game, as it's not in a tricky situation. But UCF could surprise, um, I, I think, quite a fair few people this year um, and do a lot better than some people might think. Uh, regardless of that, though, I do have Cincinnati winning this game. Uh, just more talented on the defensive side. And if you look recently at the defenses that UCF has had, it's not been great. Um, I am not relying on UCF to pull off this upset. I think Cincinnati is going to win it. Um, and then their next couple of games are on the road. A road game against Navy and a road game against Tulane. We're going to highlight both of those in green right now. I just don't see a way that Navy can beat them. Uh, I, I don't see Navy being that competitive th this year. Um, I, I, I just don't see it. Um, and then Tulane, Tulane's usually a team that's always there, um, but they're losing quite a fair bit of talent this year. Um, and it, I, I just don't see a way Cincinnati loses that game. Could be uh, an upset potential as Cincinnati might be looking ahead to their next game, um, but I, I really just don't see it. I, see, I think Cincinnati is going to be able to easily win that one. Uh, this is a game that I think a lot of Tulsa fans are circling. Uh, that game against Cincinnati, they want revenge for what happened last year. It was a very close competitive game. Tulsa, I, uh, Tulsa fans, I don't know how close you're going to be, though. Uh, you're, you're losing a lot of talent. You're losing your starting quarterback, and you're also, you're also losing um, a first-round pick in Zaven Collins there at linebacker. And I know listed as linebacker. He could have played anywhere. But, of course, not coming back was the first-round pick of the Arizona Cardinals. I just don't see Tulsa being as competitive as they were last year. Uh, and for that reason, I am going to pick Cincinnati to win this game. They're going to be better offensively. They're going to be better uh, defensively. Cincinnati's got more pieces figured out right now. I'm going to trust the Bearcats to win that football game. Now on the road against USF, University of South Florida, the Bulls. This is another Friday night game uh, for Cincinnati on the road. Um, USF has always been a quality team. Uh, but as of late, they've kind of struggled. Um, and, and I don't really see a reason to believe that the struggles won't continue this year uh, for USF. Just not a whole lot coming in. Uh, quite a bit of talent leaving as well. Um, I see Cincinnati being able to win in that game. Um, although, again, like I was talking about, you see a lot of teams, highly ranked teams, lose these weekday games on the road because of the short week of practice. And then you have the travel day and everything like that. So, I mean, hey, anything could happen. We've seen a lot of crazy things in college football. Definitely could be an upset there. I just don't see it being with a team like USF. Uh, SMU is an interesting team to figure out coming into this year, and it happens to be Cincinnati's next game and their second-to-last game of the season. Um, SMU returns some pretty good pieces um, on offense, but it's the defense that has me worried about this SMU team. It's a reason I also think Cincinnati's going to win this game. I'm going to keep talking about it all season long. Cincinnati's defense is going to be incredible, and I also think it's what wins them this game. I also think it's what's going to win them against Eastern Carolina. I don't know a whole lot about Eastern Carolina. 
Uh, but I know enough to know that they're not going to be anything special. And I don't see them pulling off an upset uh, with Cincinnati, that being a road game. So, hey, with that, you see every game highlighted in green but one. That means I have the Cincinnati Bearcats going 11-1. and one. Could I see them going 12-0? and 0? Yes, absolutely. I've already talked about it. I can see them winning the Indiana game, which I have them winning. I could see them winning the Notre Dame game, which I have them winning. They're coming off a bye week after that Indiana game. I just see them dropping one of those two games. And if not, I see them dropping a game somewhere, like a game on the road. Maybe Tulane gets them, maybe USF again. Uh, that Saturday gets them. UCF might be until – I mean, there's a lot of places where I think Cincinnati could lose a game. Um, a lot of it's more, way more unlikely than that Indiana-Notre uh, Dame. Um, but I think they'll split those, and I think that's a pretty likely occurrence for the Cincinnati team. Could they lose both? Yes, absolutely. And my worst case scenario is I have them losing both and one more. Um, just talent loss might be the fact that they're, I don't know. That's your absolute worst, uh, worst case scenario, though. I don't think that's going to happen. I think the Bearcats are poised to go 11 and 1. And hey, if they go undefeated, there could be some serious talk um, playoff time. But that's going to do it for my preview and predictions for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Leave a like on this video. Hit the subscribe button if you're brand new. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think the Bearcats are going to do. You can also share this video with everyone you know because I'm trying to grow the channel as big as possible. And then the next team that we're going to be looking at tomorrow is the Oregon Ducks. Can they win the Pac-12 again? 2021, you're going to have to find out tomorrow. Remember to play hard but tailgate harder. I'll see all of you guys tomorrow again. We're going to look at Oregon. Goodbye.